Hi, welcome back to the Rocket Channel, and this is the build of my 40,000 foot minimum diameter three inch rocket. So check it out. All right, we start the project out by sanding the tube. This is where the coupler will go into the top of the tube. I went for a glued in coupler with the electronics bay inside the coupler there on top of the motor. So this is just promoting a good mechanical bond from between the fiberglass parts. You can see me sanding the coupler there. And then I'm using foam templates that are left over from a project years ago. These are kind of old school. I believe I made them by printing out a guide from the payloadbay.com. Basically you input the dimensions of the fins and tube and everything and you can print out a fin guide on a piece of paper and I would transfer that to the foam board and cut it out and you can see me marking the fins on the tube. This is an old school approach especially in the day of 3D printed guides but the electronics showed we had very little roll rate on ascent so I would say it was perfectly effective. I used 8th inch carbon fiber to keep to uh, allow for a thinner fin thickness. You can see me sanding the edges of those to promote a good bond. All right, we're gonna try to do, tack all these fins on at the same time. I think I have a, a, a plan set up here. So basically, I have two of these foam guides and uh, I have marks where the fins need to go. So I'm gonna use JB Quick, tack these on. It's the quick dry JB weld. So we'll put some on the root of the fin and then this is set up so I can stick this in like that. It'll hold them all. Then before it cures, I will slide that on there so I can make sure it is in perfect alignment or Close enough. This, you know, we're using foam board templates and what, whatnot, so nothing perfect. Time to mix some JB Weld, everyone's favorite adhesive. Why is the hardener always so much harder to squeeze out than the resin? We may never know. So you just see me applying some of that JB Quick to the root of the fin. And I'm gonna try to do all these in one shot, as I said earlier. So very neatly put that epoxy on there and then slide it into the slot of the fin guide. And it actually fits well enough that it will kind of hold itself until all the fins are in. Number two goes in. Number three, we are racing the clock because this JB Weld is going to set up on us. Oh, and we just made it with number four. Once those are in, we race to get that other piece of foam board slid on the back side of the fins, and this will totally hold them in place until that JB Quick cures, which I believe is, takes around 10 minutes for it to set up to, you, to the point where you can handle it. We we'll double check that all the fins are in the right spot and we set it aside to let it set up. Now that those fins are on, we're gonna take a little bit of more, more JB Quick, put it in the top of the top side of the tube here, and that will glue in our coupler. Few things are as satisfying as sliding a coupler into a tube with epoxy. Something so satisfying about that. So we let that set up, remove the tape, and off to do the fillets. 
which I'm using, uh, I believe, Hysol or Loctite. Yeah, Hysol um, E120HP. It was the first time I've used an epoxy like this, and I wasn't totally satisfied with it. Um, there was a few things I didn't know about it when I chose it, but I had heard that people were happy with it, and so I wanted to see what it was all about. Um, it, the 120 is the work time, so it's about a, an hour and a half, or a, no, <laughs> two hour work time, and um, I found that I needed to mix it and let it sit a while um, so that it would thicken up a bit because I had problems with it running. So you you see this is epoxy that's been setting for maybe about 40 minutes and it's finally gotten to that no sag state and they turned out pretty nice. Definitely worked for the application but um, if for all projects going forward that require this grade of epoxy I will be moving toward uh, Infinity Bond 420. Alright, so this is my 3 inch minimum diameter rocket that I flew at Alamosa back in May. Um, as you saw, the build video kind of abruptly ended after the fins were on, although that is mostly um, the whole rocket. Um, but I was running really short on time before I left for that launch, and so I did not film anything else. Um, so this is a Wildman 3 inch filament wound fiberglass tube. A six to one Curtis nose cone. The coupler was glued into the booster. This is the motor case. It is a 75, 76, 80. Used an M685. 10 second burn Aerotech. And the motor goes almost all the way up. So I made a sled which um, unfortunately broke on landing. Um, but essentially it packed a featherweight Blue Raven and an Ultus Metrum Easy Mini into a very small space. This is more or less what I had to work with. I used se vinyl, sealed vinyl tube charges like uh, Tony Alcacer uses. I have a bulk plate and this forged eye bolt and so that basically screws into the top of the motor case. And I had about three and a, three inches to fit all of those electronics. Um, here's my main parachute which did not cut. You can see the cable cutter that I used. This is a 357 Magnum cartridge with a, a plug in the end that um, had black powder in it that would uh, blow the plug out and cut that zip tie. Um, it worked really well in testing. Unfortunately, uh, I filled it up here and then transported it to Colorado. And um, unfortunately, the black powder spilled out in transport. And I thought it was fine, but it really wasn't. And so when the E-match fired, there wasn't anything to separate it. Um, this, I used half inch mule tape for the shot cord, which as you can see is all twisted up. And a, a nine inch, I think it's a nine inch top flight thin mill as a drogue. So just pretty much almost, almost nothing. And it still landed almost five miles away. The winds aloft were absolutely insane. Um, so that is the rocket. Braden did get video, so we'll cut of the Braden did get video of the launch, so we'll cut to that. Although someone walked right in front of the camera right before it took off, so the video could have been better, but it, it is what it is. Whitney, you ready? Yep. All right, five, four, three, two, one, start. Please. Gary, yes. <laughs> Policy is nothing. 
I have plans to fly this one more time next year on the same motor. This flight went just a hair over 41,000 feet. And um, I believe I can get a couple more out of it. Uh, I just need, so for one, this, the M685 I flew was pretty old. It was from like 2017 and it had a Medusa nozzle. The, there should be a decent gain from having a single throat nozzle at that altitude. Um, just with a more optimized exit cone as opposed to the four smaller exit cones. And um, the winds above 20,000 feet were absolutely ferocious that day. And so that cut down on my altitude significantly. This is my first time using barbecue paint and with and with no primer and it held up really well this rocket went mach 2 and as you can see there's pretty much i mean very little mock rash compared to previous flights i did break two fins on landing because there wasn't a main um but that's easily fixable so i plan to um basically dremel off that epoxy and put new ones on or I guess the same fins, but reattach them. For this rocket, I used um, Loctite E120 HP, aerospace epoxy. Very expensive and I wasn't totally happy with, with it. Um, what I'm, I've switched to now is the 3M DP 420 NS, which is the no sag variety. This is the off brand Infinity Bond 420 NS. And it, it is nice and thick. It actually has a better peel rating, um, which is what it, kind of important for our purpose because that is the resistant basically keeping the fin from snapping off. Um, so that's what I'll use to reattach the fins and for the high performance builds going forward. Proline is also a good choice. I just don't have any and I like using the cartridge because I can disperse it with the, uh, the nice applicator tip. So there's really no mixing. Although when I did build this rocket, I didn't have any static mixers so i just mixed it by hand so you can do that as well all right thanks for checking out the video please subscribe if you haven't already this was a very exciting flight for me flight for me getting over 40,000 feet hopefully i can set a new record next year and um we'll see you next time there you go.